So you guys might be thinking, Aaron, this is the Galaxy S9, this is the Galaxy S9 Plus, I know all about this, but what we have in this package right here is something a little bit more than that. So we're gonna take this to Samsung headquarters and they're gonna help us get it open. And we're here. I gotta say, this is a pretty exciting moment. The Samsung Galaxy S9. The Galaxy S9 Plus. This is the first of the next generation of smartphones. We've got the code. Let's get it open. Okay, so the first thing you're probably gonna notice is we have not one, not two, but three of each of the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the Galaxy S9 Plus. And almost definitely the most exciting thing about these smartphones is what they've done with the camera. But just before we get to that, we've got to mention some of the more immediately apparent physical changes. You probably noticed that as well as the midnight black and the coral blue color, we've got a new one, lilac purple, which has pretty much become my immediate favorite. There's also a gray version of the phone, but that's not available here in the UK. Now, upon first glance at these devices, you might be thinking, Okay, this looks a bit like the S8, I'm bored, now I'm leaving. But there are a lot of meaningful changes here which demonstrate evolution in the right direction. The fingerprint scanner placement on the Note 8 and the S8 received a lot of complaints. Being beside the camera module, it was very high up on the phone which made it quite a stretch for your fingers from the bottom. Well, no longer. The Galaxy S9 has pulled the fingerprint scanner and pushed it below the camera module. Which makes it much less of a stretch, it's in a much better location. And along the same lines of correcting the Galaxy S8's shortcomings, the speakers here are a world apart. Samsung's recent acquisition of Harman has enabled the firm to integrate Dolby Atmos surround sound audio and also ramp up the volume to approximately 40% more than the S8. It's not quite razor phone level, but it is many steps in the right direction. The headphone jack has made a return, and with the S9, Samsung has also introduced intelligent face scanning, which combines the front camera as well as the iris scanner to make something that is perhaps even more secure. From the fairly short amount of time I've spent with it so far, it's not close to as fast as a phone like the OnePlus 5T's face scanner, but it is also much harder to fool. Samsung has also kept microSD cards and they've taken it a step further. Instead of 256 gigs of external storage, you can now add 400. Something you don't normally hear when it comes to smartphone successes, the Galaxy S9 phones are shorter, fatter, and heavier than their predecessors. But there is a reason for this, we are getting there. The displays look almost exactly the same, and whilst in terms of size and resolution they actually are, there are some cool things going on here. They are even brighter than before, but not by a huge margin. And whilst some people were worried as early renders made the bezels look larger than they were on the Galaxy S8, in actuality they've gotten even slimmer. To give you an idea though, with the S9 Plus, about 0.39mm has been shaved off the top and about 1.01 off the bottom. This is so subtle that even side by side it's tough to tell, but there is a difference. Something I thought which was perhaps even more interesting was the dark colour filter the company has placed over these new screens, meaning that when the displays are off, the screen of the S9 looks closer to black and therefore blends better into the body. TouchWiz is again immediately familiar, but at the same time refined. There are new colour changing dynamic wallpapers, and the phone now works completely in landscape mode. But also, there's new stuff here. There's augmented reality emojis. And whilst the tracking here is not as accurate as the iPhone X's and emojis, it is cool that these also work with WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, and that you can scan your own face in here and get a personalized emoji. There are some minor tweaks to Samsung's DeX too, and Bixby makes a big return. And whilst I can't say this is gonna be a big selling point, it is definitely more fleshed out and a more finished product compared to when it was announced last year. Features like live translation take center stage, but I'm gonna need to spend a bit more time to see how well this works day to day. And quickly, before we get onto the camera, both phones are rocking the very latest Exynos 9810, or the Snapdragon 845, depending on your region. And both of these tower above the last gen in terms of performance. But whilst the S9 has four gigs of RAM, the S9 Plus comes with six. All right, let's talk about cameras. After all, the tagline of this phone is the camera reimagined. Samsung has introduced for both models what they're calling dual aperture. The ability to monitor light levels and flick between f2.4 in broad daylight and a record-breaking f1.5 in low light. So next to the Pixel 2, considered the current king of cameras, 
the level of light captured here is on a different level entirely. Levels of noise are controlled by the phone taking 12 photos every single time you press that shutter button and only selecting the best pixels from each. And notice also, whilst the Galaxy S9 has a single lens camera, the S9 Plus has a dual lens, one wide angle and one telephoto, making the S9 Plus quite a bit more capable than the Galaxy S9, not something we saw last year with the S8 Plus and the S8. But there's more, and to me, one of my favourite parts about the camera of these phones is the super slow motion. The ability to capture a short burst, about 0.2 seconds, of 960 frame per second footage. Which is great, I mean this has been done before, but previously the problem people have had with it is that because phones are only powerful enough to record this for a very short period of time, you almost always miss what you're trying to catch. Whereas with these new phones, you select a certain area. And within this square you've selected, the phone only starts recording super slow-mo when there's motion in that area. And that helps you capture what you're actually trying to. In this ideal lab setting, it works great. You can reverse the video, you can set it as a live wallpaper, but time will tell how this will fare when out and about in the public, when the phone is handheld, and perhaps when the subject is a little bit less defined. Alright, so battery capacities on the new phones are identical to what we saw on the S8 and the S8 Plus. That's 3000 for the smaller phone and 3500 for the larger one. Okay, so whilst on first inspection the Galaxy S9 may seem a little bit too familiar coming from the S8, to the point where it doesn't necessarily look like a next generation device, what I can say is this. Samsung have taken the Galaxy S8, corrected almost all of its obvious flaws, heavily souped it up in terms of power, storage and camera, and then also added in flair in areas we perhaps did not expect, like AR emojis, like super slow motion video, and intelligent face scanning. They aren't the first company to do a lot of these things individually, but having them all together in one complete finished package that looks this good is something very, very exciting. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you are new around here, it would mean a lot to me if you could smash that subscribe button down below. And let me know what content you want to see on the Samsung Galaxy S9 going forward. Thanks a lot for watching, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.